My face is giving Shorty is working on her skin. However, Shorty is still working. <laughs> Hi, my name is Monisha. My block hand is becoming so strong and unapologetically so. For context, I went to social work school and I think a part of the reason why I was pushed aggressively towards social work is because I care very much about different social movements and the condition of people. I believe so long as we all live on earth, we all deserve to be treated with compassion and care. I don't know if it's gonna be problematic to say this. I went to a school that's very empathetic towards people who have felonies and I grew up in a second chance state. So I've always been around different groups of people and I recognize that just because someone does something bad in the past, doesn't mean that they're going to continue that behavior for the rest of their lives. I also recognize that I've had a wide array of experiences that go beyond having taught me empathy and have pushed me towards people pleasing and not really having uh, the ability to protect myself. To some extent, I also had this um, social perception of a low sense of value meaning it just felt like even though i valued myself that doesn't mean the society was going to value me in the way that i valued me so i tried to level my expectations and how i perceived myself based off of how society perceived me and that's silly don't ever do that that's a bad idea it's a bad idea because eventually we can put ourselves much lower on hate to say the word pedestal however we're gonna go along with the word pedestal we can put ourselves on a lower a lower footing if you will a lower footing like perhaps we're really up here but because of other reasons we try to be down here and the problem with undermining our league Undermining our leave, underestimating ourselves means that we may want to stay in a position where we're trying to be fair to others and not really see where we are. And what happens is we can indirectly offend, assault, irritate, and annoy people who just aren't on that level. I recently had an interaction with someone who I knew since I was a child and arguably that in itself. Well, actually, uh, arguably that in itself was problematic. They wanted me to do a project for them. And eventually it just became me really kindly understanding their plight and even being somewhat supportive. And then getting to the point of recognition that it felt as though they were fetishizing me. And when I say fetishizing me, I don't mean sexually. Of course, that could happen too. Sometimes people sexualize things because they think sex is going to give them the outcome that they desire. However, when I say fetishize, I mean they see something as the solution. So they harp on something as a solution. And while I, my identity in itself was not the fetish. I think the identities that I have were the fetish and the things that I could provide were the fetish. And it was just this weird, dark thing where they kept trying to push for something and I kept explaining that I don't really have the time to or the bandwidth or really the, the desire at this point. And they kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And the push went, the push, the push started to happen more so when I said no. When I started expressing, yeah, I actually don't have the time, that's when they pushed harder. And then eventually, block hand. Now the problem's gone. I understand some people may argue, Monisha, you can't block all your problems, to which I say, you are right. However, sometimes blocking is an answer. And I really, really think 
that it's an answer that should be explored more often. And I guess the part of the reason why I am pretty content with using the block button is because I didn't really used to use the block button before. Before, I used to have patience or engage or even question if I was the problem or if I wasn't being as sympathetic or if I wasn't seeing things how people want me to see them. And then I watched a video about the INFJ personality. I am an INFJ. Every time I take it, I am an INFJ, except for the time that I took it and I was an ENFJ turbulent, which made me realize when I am heavily extroverted, that is when I start to feel turbulent. So my natural disposition is to be introverted. Wow. Good to know. I recommend taking that test because I, I think that test made me realize when we shift from what we are to what we're not, how we can end up decreasing the quality of our work, of our self-expression, and possibly even our personhood. I am happy to know that I am an INFJ because uh, even on the test, I, I border it. I, I'm really close to extroverted and I can do extroverted for a certain level of time. That being said, if I'm primarily in an extroverted function, it doesn't work. And it makes sense because I often end up being the person where when people are upset, I'm willing to listen. I'm very supportive. I care very deeply for my friends. And then eventually I started to realize, wow, that's actually a lot of energy. And it made me aware of how the energy exchanges that I give to friends and how they give to me. It's just made me more compassionate uh, towards how it is very exhausting to listen. And for that reason, I'm very much more thoughtful regarding what I share and what I don't share because I realize that everything has weight. Going back to that example of that person, they just said so many things that were just accurate historically and wrong. Really gave me sounds colonized vibes. I'm reading this book, Seduction by Clement Knox, and it talks about how during 18th century England, there was this guy, I think his name is Samuel Richardson, or Richardson Samuel says that I don't like a whole, I guess Richardson is a, a sure last name. I just don't, I just, you know, I looked up a photo of this guy. It's really irritating guys. Just, you know, just, you, you know when like you see someone's face and then they have views that you don't like and then you can zero in in their face and realize, mm, I am not going to body shame you because that would be very hypocritical of me especially because I believe in body neutrality. That being said, seeing his face and then seeing the views that he pushed into the world wasn't just England, it was the world his work was translated into Dutch, into German, and dis disseminated, disseminated all throughout Europe. I mean, probably not all throughout Europe, but a, a lot through Northern Europe. And also because during the 18th and 19th century, the British were going around and colonizing different colonies, these values likely showed up in the people that ended up being colonized. He believed in the virtuous woman and the gentlemanly man. Uh, he also believed that if a woman leaves the home, then it's her fault for anything that goes bad. Because why would a woman leave the home? His work was so prolific to some people that it ended up becoming movie adaptions even even after his death. This guy sucked. I would say he's one of the fathers of slut shaming. That guy that I was referring to obviously internalized those views to which I say sounds colonized, block. And I think it's really important to start walking, like running. When I say run, I, I mean not literally run, I, I wanna be very clear. Don't literally run, stop, recognize the words that someone is saying, and then start thinking about 
how you would actually be able to navigate a relationship with them moving forward. And if you do not think that you can navigate a relationship with them moving forward, then you need to start planning how to exit relationship. If you can, sometimes we have to work with people that we are not a fan of. <laughs> this person sent me uh, a decently large sum of money. Decently large, decently large. And it probably just wasn't worth it, really. Um, wasn't worth it. I sent the money back and then blocked them and some people were like, why would you send the money back? Why wouldn't you keep the money? Because I don't want that energy. I don't want to just accept money from just anywhere and anybody. I know that sounds so weird. You get a sizable lump sum of money and you don't want to do the work for someone. And the answer is as simple as blocking. They're probably never going to be able to trace or find you. I don't know that that's true. Why not keep the money? Because I don't want that energy. I want it to be very clear very clear for the records that I did not want any, any part of this person's energy. It's like I choose things that'll make it so my conscious is clear and it's really nice and really happy. And I also just have this uh, happy-go-lucky Sagittarian belief that if I just wait, that money will come back to me tenfold. So I'm definitely looking forward to somehow getting $3,000 in the near future. I don't know how that's gonna happen. Therefore, I am uh, unsure. That being said, uh, one thing that I've learned, especially through my early 20s, is through life, we're always going to have experiences that we're going to need to regenerate from or heal from or overcome. Uh, it's very unlikely that we'll be sitting in our homes for the rest of our lives. We're going to go outside and we're going to have experiences that can make or break days. And uh, even when we don't leave the home, even when we stay inside, there are going to be experiences that hurt. That's, that's a part of life. And what I've learned is... We choose to not let money be what drives us, what motivates us, what can control us, then a lot of people lose the ability to manipulate us. And we're free. We're free of the guilt or the questioning that comes from sometimes being moved by money. I, I, I genuinely, I really genuinely cannot over emphasize do not be motivated by money do not let money be what motivates you you can know that you want to make a lot of money and it could be what money can buy that motivates you for example i want to start traveling more that's a motivator for me to work harder i want to be able to pay off my student loan debt not by any means necessary <laughs> I, I would like to be able to pay off my student loan debt. That would be cool. That would be cool beans. I want to be able to help my parents through life, even though they're so helpful to me. These are things that money would really help. That being said, I'm not going to compromise my moral safety. And by safety, I mean direct safety. There are situations where we can have indirect uh unsafety for lack of better words unsafety like not being safe indirectly uh for example i worked and went to school in new york and i remember one of the days i was supposed to go to class there was a bomb threat on um the path to school so somebody had a bomb so that's a form of indirectly being unsafe and it happens we're, we're never fully safe that being said uh interacting with dude that really was uh giving these traditionally colonized perspectives really made me feel uncomfortable and ari lennox in one of her songs uh she brings up sometimes mental abuse is worse than physical abuse and I know that in this story that I'm telling you, 
I, this person doesn't seem to be mentally abusive, but it's the little things that they said. Like it's how they called either me or them a narcissist. They just said the word narcissist and I didn't know who it was directed towards. It's how they casually called me a heifer. It is how they just started saying all these weird obscure things as though they were feeling like a transracial man and all these little things. It just, it was enough interactions to stop and trust that perhaps the reason why they're in the situation that they're in is none of my concern. Keep it moving. After doing the work that I needed to do on myself, I recognized that one of my biggest problems was one, never fully healing and just keeping on going. And I think that's a lot of people's lives. I think a lot of people don't have the opportunity to stop and process the things that they've gone through. I mean, there are movies called Waiting to Exhale, and uh, that's unfortunately what ends up happening to a lot of people. So I feel very blessed to have gone through the experiences I've gone through and then had the opportunity to exhale it and process it and let it go. And then two, the second thing that I needed to learn to let go of is this feeling of responsibility to care for others and that is just not how I feel at all anymore. In fact, I mostly feel a responsibility to myself. I sound selfish, huh? It doesn't mean that I don't have empathy or compassion for other people, I do. It means that I stop and think about what makes the most sense. One example of this that I can give is my friend told me this example that he has or had for class and basically the example is this is a what would you do kind of situation the example is there is a mother who has a son that is bleeding out if something is not performed on him if surgery is not performed on him if the blood transfusion is not performed on him he's gonna die and the mother will not allow the blood transfusion to be performed on him. The reason why is because of their religious beliefs and due to the law, they are protected under religious freedom. My friend was so upset with this example, believed in challenging it, did not want to let it be that a boy died on his watch in the situation where he's a doctor. It felt like this is his expertise, he should be able to do it. And my argument to that was, the, the only way you're really gonna fight that one is finding another way. I think that in that example, what is the concern is one, find uh, evidence of abuse for that child. If abuse can be found, then perhaps there can be a temporary separation between the mother's parental rights which could save the boy's life this is a hypothetical situation i don't know how true that is and i guess it varies based off the state and then the other option that i thought through in that moment was okay maybe we need to start honoring children's rights to be able to make decisions for their bodies to some extent those are the only two options because if somebody is protected under religious freedom that means you have to honor that. And if you do not honor that, that could mean losing your license. That could mean a lawsuit. That could mean if you, especially if somebody is a person of color doctor, that could mean more loss of other patients because you lose a person of color doctor. And if I'm not mistaken, black doctors make about 5% uh, of the population, black physicians. If I'm incorrect, put the number down there because I know it's very low. That's what I mean by choosing to prioritize myself. Because when we don't choose to prioritize ourselves in this situation, recognizing that it's, when it's you against the law and uh, the risk is lawsuit, license, and potentially other clients, then unfortunately what do you choose you have to make a choice there's no real winning other than being able to maybe find another way 
And that is the extent that I realize that I can go in some of these situations. That example, that, that moral conundrum really taught me a lot because even though I, in my natural first instinct, if you're asking me what I think should be done, I think the boys should be able to live. That being said, that's not how the world necessarily works. And through being able to understand how the world works, I'd rather work in a way that is wise than work in a way that is emotionally driven. What I've learned is emotions, emotionally driven decisions are usually how we get caught up. And I don't do emotional blocks. I, I, I actually take patience and time to really think about what is the best decision. And then I make a move. And I've even learned to some extent, some decisions need to be made. And then that's it. I'm not perfect at that. I'm not perfect by any means. I think the most unfortunate thing about growing up is realizing how all the great, wonderful ideas that I had when I was young may have been right. However, they weren't necessarily in alignment with the reality that we live in. And unfortunately, it seems as though when it comes to uplifting humanity or any society, any culture, it is a slow, careful process.